The Apple Watch Ultra, the Polar Vantage V2. Today we're gonna compare these two. We're gonna look at the pros and the cons, and most importantly, which one is right for you, for your lifestyle and for your level. I will compare these two watches on what I myself find important when it comes to sports watches, but also what's important when it comes to watches in general. When comparing this, I will use the Work Outdoors app on the Apple Watch because I just find that to be the best app if you're using your Ultra for sports and professional training. Let's first talk about size. The Apple Watch Ultra comes in one size, it's a 49 millimeter, and I was very worried or I was curious about how the watch would look on my arm as I don't have the biggest hands or arms in the world. Not once have I had a problem with this watch and the size when it comes to the everyday use. Then I was even more curious about how it would be when I was actually working out. Because when running I thought that this watch would be too bulky, too big, too heavy and not feel good on my arm at all. And I still bought it. But after just 5 minutes of running I fell in love with this watch because it had such a big screen, the information was clear and I even had like a map that could show me where I was going. But when it comes to performing, I really do feel like the Polar is better when it comes to the size because it's lighter, it's 47 millimeters instead of 49. And when you compare the weight on it, it's also lighter. 52 grams on this one compared to the 61 grams on the Ultra. So when it comes to the size, I really feel like this is more of a performance watch. Size-wise, my conclusion is that it really depends on what you need and what you're going for. So for everyday life, I love my Apple Watch, I love the size of it for some runs when I'm doing easy runs or if I'm going into places that I'm not familiar with and I need the map function, the Apple Watch is great. But then when competing, there's this weird part of me that starts thinking about the weight and the size and everything that can hold me back from performing as good as I can. And that's when the Polar wins for me. I guess we can say it's 1-1 depending on if you're as weird as me or not. Because if you're as weird as me, it's kind of like Polar 1, Ultra 0. But let's compare the screens on them. Because when it comes to the screen of the Apple Watch, obviously it's a great one. The screen quality and the brightness is amazing. The other day when I did a 5 a.m. run, it was dark outside and I was using the Polar. It was so dark outside that I could not see the information on the watch. And for me to be able to see this, I had to hit the light button. And sometimes I was really struggling to do this. So it just made it really hard for me to continuously watch the pace, my heart rate and all the information on my watch. With the Ultra, this would not have been a problem because as soon as I would look at my watch, it would light up and I would just see everything very clearly. And it would be this bright, nice screen that Apple always produces on its units. Without doubt, when it comes to brightness and the screen quality, Ultra 1, Polar 0. Now let's look at the training views. I find the Apple Ultra Watch kind of shows me everything I want on my runs. I can have different training views, which makes it easy for me to change if I'm doing intervals compared to an easy run, if I need different information based on the training that I'm doing. When I'm in new places or places I'm not very familiar with, it's also super nice to have this map function that I was talking about earlier. This makes it easy for me to find my way and the GPS really works as it would on the phone. The Polar really does have the same training views. I get the same information. I don't feel like I'm really missing anything, but when it comes to the map function, it's not even close to the Ultra. So yes, I do have the track back to home or return to home thing. It really doesn't work well. Last time I tried this, I was lost in the woods and I could not for the life of me find a way home because obviously the watch showing me the direction doesn't really help me when there are no paths or uh, trails or anything to walk on. So Apple Watch is better on this part. But still when it comes to training views, I would say it's a tie. If you need a map function, Apple Watch will win. But how many times do you actually need a map function? Again. This really depends on your needs and your preferences. Let's compare the commands or the way you actually start, stop, 
pause and everything with your watch. On the Apple Watch, we have this so-called action button. This is a great feature because it can get you from just normal everyday use view to starting the workout by just clicking on one button, which is the orange button on the, on the watch. You can change the function of this button if you want it to be used for something else, but for me, I have it programmed as it was, I think, where it's just like you hit the button, you start the training, and then if you hit it again, you, you get a new lap. And as smart as this sounds, and it's just like great for when you start your workout and when you're lapping, it is not as good when it comes to sports. In my opinion, it should be super easy, it should be super functional also during the workout. But you do have to rely on the touch screen of your watch and that is problematic at times. Although I love the touch screen of my iPhone and my iPad, I don't find it to be as good and practical on the Apple Watch. This is because when I'm running, I really want to be able to hit something fast to pause. If I need to stop to tie my shoes, if I need to stop to have a little wee, or if I just have to stop for a red light. Now I have to stop, I have to like kind of try to hit the touch like and pause it, which just, it doesn't really work for me. And if I'm in addition to this, is sweating a bit and a drop of sweat hits the surface of my watch, it will be even harder. As a former athlete, I find this to be super annoying. I would love to be able to pause my training by just hitting a simple button, just like you could do on just about any other sports watch. Now I have to actually stop running before I'm able to pause my watch. And if you're a Strava runner, this will affect your average pace. I think this is where the Polar or any other sport watch will be superior because you can so easily just hit this button and then you have paused your workout. And even though the Polar also has touch functions, I really appreciate that I can use the good old fashioned buttons to do just about everything with this watch. I would actually say that when it comes to the user experience in this way, the Polar is my favorite and it just makes it so much easier. When it comes to sports, it's all about efficiency. You want to make something go faster and smoother and that's what the Polar does for me. Polar One Ultra Zero. When it comes to sports watches, it's hard to not talk about accuracy. It all comes down to how good the watch is at measuring your distance, your pace, your heart rate, everything that you need to know. I do find that every sports watch out there will show a bit of a longer distance than on a track or an already measured trail. This I think is because we don't usually run the fastest or shortest way because we tend to pass people or do something to kind of avoid something in our way. I do find the Ultra to show quite the accurate pace when I'm running. So when I'm looking at my watch and the pace, I think that it's pretty accurate. The only issue I have with this is that the reported pace that I get as like a notification on every kilometer that doesn't really seem to match what I get on Strava and also with the feeling. Sometimes it shows me doing a 430 pace and then the next one 530 without me really feeling like there was any difference in the terrain or my pace. I also find that the reported pace that I get every kilometer is not the same as the one that I get on Strava after my training. But when it comes to the real time pace that I see on my watch, it really does fit with what I get as my average pace after the training. So it doesn't really matter to me, but it's still like kind of a bit of a weird thing right there. The Polar seems to be just the same as the Ultra here. I don't really feel like there's any big difference and I can't say that one watch stands out one way or the other. So I guess it's a tie, one one. I never, ever rely on the heart rate on my wrist. So if I was to use the heart rate on the wrist, I would just do it on easy runs where I don't really need to know my heart rate and I kind of know myself. After years of training, I know I can guess my heart rate most of the time. I can't say that I have noticed a huge difference in the heart rate accuracy on the wrist measuring of these two watches. Then again, I'm not using it a lot, but I don't feel like it's a huge difference. I feel like if you have both these watches pretty tight on your wrist, they will show you a decent heart rate. Like I said, it will not be accurate, not 100%, and anyone telling you so 
it just doesn't work. For me, it works when I'm sitting still, but when I'm in activity, it does not work. So when it comes to the score here, I would actually say it's zero, zero, because I don't see how any athlete would rely on or trust the measurement of the heart rate on the wrist. I have never worn any other heart rate strap than the one of Pular. Uh, and luckily I can use this for my Ultra 2, but it's been very unreliable. In the beginning I found it to be pretty good, it connected to my watch and it worked pretty well. But then eventually it just turned to, out to be very unreliable. It didn't work when I wanted it to work and I didn't really know how to fix it. I do think that this comes from the fact that the Ultra is connected to a lot of different devices like my phone, my AirPods, my AirPods Max. It's just like connected to too many Bluetooth devices, which kind of makes it harder for it to connect to the heart rate monitor when I want it to. This never happens with my Pular, and as a person who really relies on the heart rate monitor and it being connected to my watch, I find this to be much better and a much better fit. I mean, it does make sense. It's Pular connecting to Pular, not Apple connecting to, app, to, to Pular. So, I guess it does make sense, but it's also like an important thing to bring into this discussion and this comparison. So for me in this case, it's an easy Polar One Ultra Zero. Let's talk about these watches as sleep monitors. I know that the Apple Watch is supposedly the best watch out there for analytics when it comes to sleep. I do find it just too hard to find all this information. I need to go into the health app and I just have to look into so many weird things that it just isn't easy enough for me. And out of all the watches and sleep monitors that I've been trying out throughout the years, I still find the Polar to be the best one. It's easy and I, one thing is that it's easy to see. It's like giving me very easy and simple feedback. My sleep was good, my sleep was poor. And I know that that sounds silly to just trust that, but back when I was working out and I was a full-time athlete, I knew my body very well and I could really tell that the watch was right. It also really fit with the tests that we did in the morning, like the fitness test to see if we were at the place we were supposed to be at. If you wanted to know if your body was ready for more training, the test would kind of say the same as the watch. And in this way, I looked up the Polar watch as very reliable. It's important to notice that I'm no geek when it comes to the analytics. So I really love when I get simple feedback. And if you love like digging into the analytics and you don't mind going into the app, looking at everything in every detail and going in and out and kind of just fooling around in there, then maybe the Apple Watch would be better for you. But for me, like using the Whoop, using the Apple Watch, using the Polar, having had external sleep monitors, to me, Polar every day, like 10 out of 10 times. So, Polar One, Apple Watch Zero. Let's talk about battery life because this is important. Um, I am 30 years old. I grew up with watches being kind of like endless on battery. You would have it for months, maybe years before you had to change anything and then you had to change the battery. Sometimes you actually had to send it into the manufacturer to have it changed. But anyways, it was very reliable. I knew that it would work for a very long time. So when rechargeable watches came into the market a few years back, I remember thinking that this is not for me. I find it hard to have to take my watch off to charge it every now and then because I used to have my day or my watch on day in and day out and having to charge this watch and kind of forgetting that its battery was low and having to postpone my training for like 30 or 60 minutes just to wait for my watch to be charged I find that to be super annoying and I did not like it needless to say I really appreciate a watch that has a good battery life I have now gotten adjusted to the fact that I have to charge my watch but when it comes to the Apple Watch Ultra, I still have to ch charge it like every other day. So if I charge it today, which is a Saturday, I will still have to charge it on Monday, maybe even Monday morning. So it's kind of like, depending on how much I'm working out, now I'm working out one to two hours a day, it still is less than 48 hours. 
And to be honest, to me, that's it's just not good enough. If I compare that to the Polar, which lasts me for like almost a weekish, Polar is saying that the the watch will last you for 40 hours of training time. That means that training time is just about the same as the total time of the Ultra. And that is a big, big difference. And when I'm bringing my Polar with me for a weekend away, I don't need to bring a charger. If I forgot my charger, I still do have a watch. When it comes to the Ultra, I kind of need to have my charger with me wherever I go, because one day, and it will be less battery on it, and if I do a bit of more training one day, I will have less battery, so yeah. The good thing though is, and then this is for both watches, is that it doesn't take long to charge it up enough to do a training, like a workout, or and it doesn't take a lot of time to fully charge it, so it's not like the first ones where you had to wait for a pretty long time, now it's like 30 minutes or even 10 minutes will give you a lot of battery life. But this is a no-brainer when it comes to battery life. Polar 1, Apple Watch Zero. Okay, let's talk about the looks. So, I find it funny that today, sports watches, they kind of become fashion. I don't know if we can call it fashion, but it's like, it's not uncommon to see that you combine an, a sport watch with a suit. And although this is normal, I still find it to be, sometimes I want a bit more of a formal look. And this is definitely what I'm getting with the Apple Watch. I feel like it's much more formal looking and you can also change the style. So in my case, who bought the watch with this wristband, I can change it into this, which is like a bit more formal, but I can also change it into this, which makes it even more formal. It's not like a Rolex or any of those other like super nice watches, but it still doesn't stand out as a super sporty watch. So for everyday use, I would really prefer to use something like the Apple Watch. That being said, the Polar has kind of, they came out with this shift thing where it looks a bit less sporty than the original look, which would be more like it goes into it like this. So that is a huge difference, but it still is a bit too sporty for me if I'm wearing a suit, for instance. And they also don't have as many options as with the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch also has like a lot of third parties that are making these wristbands and it just makes it better and nicer. You can combine it with a lot of different things. So for this, Apple Watch 1, Polar 0. As far as workouts and trainings, I don't see why anyone, or any athlete at least, would go for the Ultra over the Polar. But I still got it. Why? I love listening to audiobooks or podcasts when I'm running. And with this, it just gives me the opportunity to listen to these kind of things without bringing my phone. And when adding the fact that I can reply to texts, I can take calls and even check my emails if I have to, and obviously pay for things with Apple Pay, it's a really good watch when I'm doing my runs during work hours. But you have to notice what kind of activity I'm talking about. If I was talking about a bike ride, I would obviously bring my phone in my pocket and I wouldn't really need the watch to listen to anything. But then again, I also wouldn't use this for my bike rides. I have another bike computer for that. So anyways, I have gone from being a full-time athlete to being a hobby runner. So it's kind of like I've, I'm not doing this full-time and I just need to be able to or for my clients to reach me during my runs, all of these things that are more like practical rather than performance based. Leaving my phone at home is not really an option when I need my clients to be able to reach me. At some point I actually used to, when I had my old Apple Watch, I would run with two watches. So one watch for people to connect to me or like for me to listen to things and I would use the Polar for the training part. It still worked better than bringing the phone, but it kind of defeats the purpose. If I was doing all my runs with other people or I was still an athlete, I would totally just use the Polar and I wouldn't really need the Apple Watch. This would be an overkill watch for everyday use and I wouldn't really need it for my runs. But since I'm doing 99% of my runs by myself, this has kind of become my trusted and best running companion in addition to Oakley, my dog. 
That being said, there are a lot of theories on the fact that wearing AirPods or anything in your ears when training or doing any kind of sports kind of prevents you from doing the technical part very well. I did a test myself back when I was a speed skater, I was doing technical jumps and the difference between the quality of my training with the AirPods in and without them, it was significant. So this is actually something to consider if you are a professional athlete. This makes me think that if I was a professional athlete and I like, put everything on the line to perform and be as good as I could, then the one function that I love about the Apple Watch and the, the main reason I got it in the first place would kind of be just wouldn't be necessary. I wouldn't really need it because it would just ruin the, the trainings and me performing as an athlete. So as a professional athlete, I would probably say go for the Polar and then as a hobby athlete, go for this Ultra. So let's sum up what we talked about here and look at the score. So when we look at the scores that I made, we end up with the Polar being seven and the Ultra being five. But it is not as black and white as this. If I was an athlete, this review would totally make me get the Pular. But this is not everything. I mean, like the reason why I would get this is because it is more of a performance watch, in my opinion. Like it has battery battery life, and it also is like this feeling that it's lighter on my arm and it doesn't hold me back when competing. It just means a lot to me. But for practical reasons, that has really nothing to do with sports. I like my Ultra because I can bring work with me on my run. I can learn while I'm running. And if I'm out of energy, I can still call my girlfriend from this and have her pick me up. I had to do that today. So thank you, Ultra. But based on this review, which watch or which one would you get? Or maybe you would get something else. Let me know in the comments below. And hey, subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna do some more reviews and I'm gonna teach you how you can perform the best you can as an athlete, whether that is professional or just a hobby runner like me.